Hey everybody, I am on the line right now with Chris Dickinson, the Dirty Daddy. He's going to be main eventing Bloodsport against John Moxley Sunday, October 11th. You can check it out live on Fight TV. It's part of the collective. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm good. Good. I'm uh, just getting ready to uh, start working out and stuff. I'm actually uh, going out to California for a week. I'm going to train with Barnett. And I have a couple of things I have to do over there for uh, the United Wrestling Network Primetime Live. So I'll do two shows over there for them. And uh, just work out for the whole week, and which is going to be pretty sweet because, you know, not a lot of people uh, get to say that they've trained with somebody like Barnett. So it's, it's good, to, good to learn things from somebody of that caliber. You, you know, it's really good to put that stuff into your, your arsenal. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty nice warm up if you want to look at it that way for such a, a grueling event like Bloodsport. You're training with the guy who has his name on the marquee, and he's one of the best you know MMA fighters in the world. So I, I know you're a, a veteran of the events. You, this is going to be your fourth match. Uh, you were on the first event when it was Matt Riddle's Bloodsport, and now third under Josh Barnett. So what's the biggest appeal to you about Bloodsport itself? Well, going back to what I was originally saying, like looking forward to training. Um, it's a shame, you know, because of the pandemic, obviously all the, uh, the schools, the dojos and stuff have been kind of shut down unless, uh, you know, guys got stuff going on privately. I haven't really been able to train, you know, roll around or, do any sort of martial arts training the last few months other than stuff by myself. So I, uh, I'm looking forward to the, the training aspect, getting prepared. It's because, uh, like you're asking what's appealing to the blood sport event. It's, uh, it's outside of the box. You know, it's different than, uh, than a, your usual pro wrestling event where, you know, the ropes are there and it makes a big difference to have the ropes involved in wrestling matches. Um, taking them away, it forces you as a talent, as a competitor, to have to really think outside of the box or to uh, develop a skill set outside of conventional pro wrestling to be able to handle yourself in a contest like that. You know, it's it, it basically opens up all these different uh, storytelling dynamics that maybe you once didn't have because you're limited to uh, what you what you have to do. Or not, maybe not so limited. You're limited in a respect where the ropes are gone. But so you have to kind of think outside the box. You get what I'm saying, right? Sure. And it's a it's a it's a different stage. It's a different platform. It's uh it's just different altogether. So it's uh it 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 helps to have the training um some sort of formal training in in grappling or you know uh martial arts or jiu jitsu whatever it is that you do uh going into something like this but even even without that you know you see guys compete in these matches and uh you know you never really know what's going to happen you know so i think that's the appeal to me especially is uh it's 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 an outside the box type of thing. It's just different. Yeah, and I, I I like asking, especially with you know an, an event like this and the UFWI events. Uh, Paradigm Pro Wrestling was doing the heavy hitters events. I think you were on one of them in 2019. Yeah, yeah, the UWFI thing. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's interesting hearing different guys' answers for it. Whether it's a new challenge, whether it's you know, they were a fighter before wrestling and they're going back to something they're familiar with. So I I know the appeal is, you know, I, I would answer similar to what you said about no ropes. It's a different challenge. It's the training. It's uh, like I, I was at the Atlantic City event in person, the last one where you fought Josh Barnett. And it's just it, it's something different where. I think you just have to experience it as a fan or as a fighter. Um, yeah, you, you have to think about um, pro wrestling matches and uh, the blueprint or the 
the tools that you're given when you're putting together a uh, pro wrestling match or you're going into a pro wrestling match, the things that elicit responses from an audience, um, what you're doing in a, in a blood sport environment or something along those lines, UWFI type match or different rules, when you take away the pitfalls and you take away um, that, that aspect of a match, you're essentially taking away what is your, what you're building to. You know, a uh, big part of the match is just the false finishes, right? So you now you have to find different ways to produce the same reaction, but you don't have that that tool to use anymore because there's no more pitfall. So you have to find ways to build around the other tools that you have. You know, and the limitations that you're given in order to elicit a different response and in my uh, personal experience, having, you know, like you said, I've, I've done several of these events like this now. I've been on, oh, I think every blood sport, um, it, it makes you a better wrestler. <clears throat> it makes you a better wrestler. It makes you a better storyteller. And also, you know, it, it, if, you, if you want to be more proficient in that, that uh, wrestling style or – you know, just by doing it, you know, you have to be, or you want to open up the, your creative palette, you know, so to speak, you know, going back and watching, um, more eighties, new Japan for me personally, I feel like the last six, seven months, just being on the shelf so much more than actually wrestling consistently where I was wrestling sometimes three, four days a week on the, you know, on the indies, you know, thankfully I was, I was keeping a pretty busy schedule. I had so much more time to just sit back and watch wrestling that I had never seen before or really watch things that I had, had maybe glazed over. Or I really dove in on the eighties, new Japan uh, stuff, Antonio Inoki, Fujiwara, Tatsumi, Fujinami. And then obviously the UWF guys and that whole thing uh, that, and, you know, watching guys like, uh, Akira Meida, Sayama, Takano. I went back and I really started watching a lot of that early martial arts uh, influenced pro wrestling that was to become the UWF, inevitably the UWFI, then what became of uh, Pancras or, you know, and then it's it was an ev- watching the evolution take place in the early stages, you know, to, to learn something truly, you should, you know, go learn its history or go look back on it and um, dealing with Josh Barnett, for instance, right. Uh, befriending Josh Barnett, working with Josh Barnett. This is a guy that was a martial artist uh, who became a pro wrestler, but he always wanted to be a pro wrestler. So he was accepted into that world of pro wrestling because of his proficiency in martial arts by Antonio Inoki himself. Like this is, this is somebody I, I absolutely want to be working with because this is this is somebody who is uh you know really understands the style of pro wrestling that we're that we're trying to to bring to the audiences. So I think that um that blood sport it really is a it's a unique dynamic. It's a very uh, authentic dynamic. Uh, it, a lot of people are kind of like dipping their toes in the um in the pool of the MMA style matches or the no ropes matches or the uh let's take away the pinfalls type matches. Let's, but I feel like blood sport first and foremost is the most authentic presentation of, uh, of what, what it's really supposed to be or what it truly is. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd say even more recently, people made the immediate comparison with raw underground when it debuted. They're like, Oh yeah, they, they watched uh, blood sport last year and got an idea. (laughs) <laughs> whether they were joking or not but uh i i like what you said about going back and educating yourself because you know like all japan and the different promotions that i'm just not familiar with from you know i was born in 1985 so uh aj gray actually mentioned it when i talked to him he said he, he watches king's arc on youtube and it's like a rabbit hole and he said just go back and watch like all japan pro wrestling noah and i like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's guy's kinda, good. That stuff's good. Yeah. Yeah. So go, yeah, you, going back you get and sucked watching into that. that stuff. You should. You should. I mean, me. I've been watching uh, Japanese wrestling for the last twenty years. My, my favorite promotion, 
you know, that you'll see I talk about, I've talked about the most over the years or are always sharing things is obviously like the 90s uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, 90s New Japan Pro Wrestling. You know, there was some stuff that I didn't really uh, grind it out with too, too, uh, as much. And thankfully, you know, we have these platforms now like New Japan World where you could you could go on New Japan World, have the, uh, so much of the, of the the important history of the company at your fingertips. So to be able to do that and uh, like I said, educate yourself and you, you don't, I am I'm one of those people. I'm old school, I guess you don't know where it's going unless you know where it came from, or you should know about the past. I've always, I'm a nerd. So I, uh, I love to watch Japanese wrestling. It's my, it's my favorite. So, you know, it's, I, I can't, I can't uh, stress enough for anybody listening especially now forget it youtube alone you got guys on there who they put so much content on there i mean all japan pro wrestling you could literally watch week for week television from every year from you know we're talking about the early 80s till the till the company uh, switched over from you know giant baba to it, it, it's uh, to the, the exodus of noah and all you could you could see it all there's so much. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I always tell people, go out and watch this stuff. Go watch this stuff. If you don't if you don't like what's going on at WWE, if it's not doing it for you, I didn't it wasn't doing it for me in high school. I stopped watching it then because we had tapes, DVDs and stuff like that. Now forget about it. You got it all at your fingertips. These kids don't even have a clue or people getting into this stuff now or the last few years. They don't have a clue how uh how easy they got it, you know. It, you, I remember t- even during the pirate, the, the, the hardcore piracy days, when uh, I mean, I would I would download t- torrent files of uh, pro wrestling Noah tours, uh, whatever the TVs were. You find somebody would have a file and you download it, and I'd burn it onto my own DVDs. There was guys back then. I'm talking like in the 2000s. I remember Bobby Fish he used to ask me to to send him his matches <laughs> because, but but that was how uh, you know how yeah. incessant incessant you had to be about gathering the material you know what i mean yeah now it's just forget about it just go type something in you'll find matches like the like no problem yeah this is definitely a case of when technology is absolutely beneficial to people wrestling fans um social media is better because you have the the guys that gift stuff but uh obviously you've talked about it a lot um the kimberly incident where you know that that really hurt you professionally probably financially where you caught a lot of heat for that and it was people saw the chair shot and the pazuzu bomb and you defended yourself because you said take it in context people are only seeing a a very small portion of a full match and yeah you know social media is even that much bigger and i think that was five or six years ago it was 2014 so yeah how long did it really take you to kind of recover from that and people you know from a fan perspective like we're not getting the full story there because you see it in politics wrestling like anything right now it's you know people take whatever whatever they come across whatever that clip is that they see and they don't they don't seek out the full story and you, you were a yeah, victim well, of that. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I'll be honest about about the whole thing. I got nothing to hide. Or, um, yeah, that happened, and it was taken completely out of context. Kim was really small, and the way she took the move, it looked it looked super violent. The people that went crazy over the chair shot, if you really go back and watch it, she has her arm completely over her head. It was a plastic chair, and it really was not that bad. Then again, take it out of context, five years ago, social media and wrestling is a completely different place. The wrestling culture is, uh, the fan, the wrestling fan culture is a completely different place. Um, I ate tons of shit for that. Tons. It was like on websites, it was on every wrestling news site. Uh, pro wrestlers were like, uh, famous old pro wrestlers were like burying it and this and that. It was just ugly, you know? Um, As far as, like, how it affected me financially, at the time, I was making some money to to be a pro, to wrestle, but I was, you know, making, like, maybe a 
for 100 150 bucks a show at the time i probably wasn't getting wasn't i i, I still uh well, what year was that 2015 i still had a job like a part-time job i wasn't fully at that point yet where i was just sufficient off of wrestling that didn't happen until maybe two years later I just, uh, it happened in basically like my home promotion. So it wasn't like my home promotion was going to stop booking me. I didn't technically lose any bookings because of it. It wasn't like people tried to blackball me, I guess. Um, in a way, it helped me, I think. In a lot of ways, it actually helped me. It certainly, I believe, helped Kim. She went on a, a, a tear after that and eventually got signed by the WWE. I think, and, and I've been told by people, I've been told by Drew Gulak, for instance, he said, you didn't play it up enough. You didn't you didn't use it to your advantage enough because I wanted it to kind of like go away because mm-hmm. I was scared of the attention that it got at first. I, and, you know, I wasn't ready to fully embrace it as like a super heel. I did cut a promo and I tried to play it up, but it was with a, it was with a, um, I was almost like scared, you know, because I was afraid that I was going to lose everything or not be able to wrestle. And I don't know if it did have long term implications on hurting my career uh, with WWE or something. I, I still went to WWE, wrestled uh, there for NXT a couple times. I was I def- me and my tag partner defended our tag titles for Evolve at a uh, WWE event in a WWE ring and won. We were I only the match I've ever had. Technically, in the WWE, I've won. I mean, did I have an opportunity there that was stopped because of that? I don't know. Maybe it was another reason. But one thing I definitely do think it affected in the the immediate was I just debuted with Ring of Honor. And uh, I was trying to work for Ring of Honor because my ultimate goal, I'll be honest, is to work for New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I was, uh, I just debuted with ring of honor and i was trying to get in there because i wanted to get into new japan for wrestling you know it just seemed like a natural fit at the time i did like a new japan pro wrestling tryout at the ring of honor school um in like a year prior like if it was march or may or something they, they didn't call me to like G- december or january of the, of later in the year and i debuted in like super bowl sunday on saturday of the of the year of the, of the next year at Ring of Honor, and it seemed like like I mean it was so positive when I debuted at Ring of Honor. They brought me in. I wrestled Elgin. We got like 20, 25 minutes. They put me over really well, and nicely on the website. They compared me to like a more uh, well put together, bigger si- sized Brian Danielson. I was like, oh my god, like this is unreal. Like, am I gonna get a push? Mm-hmm. Um, People were like lining up in the back after my master congratulate me and tell me you got a job. I'm pretty sure. And, and of course, that could all be facetious, uh, whatever. But I still was receiving. I received an email about where I travel out of. They were going to send me some dates. I never heard from them again after the video. It was like poof, gone, done. Wow. And uh, I never even got an explanation from Ring of Honor. As to why they never used me again, I just heard here. I just got hearsay from people who worked in the office, and that definitely bothered me and hurt hurt my feelings. It pissed me off, but it also motivated me. You know, it also motivated me, and I and I never stopped and I never slowed down. I just kept doing what I had to do. So, in some regard, yeah, of course it hurt me, uh, but. I wasn't going to let it stop me. You know what I mean? It was just one of those things where pick up the pieces and move on. You know, do I get kind of, did I make, I made some comments this last year, especially because people are so quick to defend intergender wrestling now. Whereas five years ago, they were like, well, what, what business does this girl have being in the ring with a man? And, you know, we, I, I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to take credit for everything. But I personally definitely have a lot to do with intergender wrestling um, being more widely recognized and I think being more widely accepted. And that probably pisses a lot of people off because there is a lot of people, old school, more old school people in wrestling who are in power in places like uh, Ring of Honor who absolutely detest that stuff. So it's just, 
I wasn't trying to be a revolutionary when it was when it was happening. I was just, you know, hey, these girls need to wrestle too. Um, I'm not going to wrestle them any different than I'd wrestle somebody else. It's just it just was common sense stuff to me. It just all worked out, uh, you know, one way or another. But you know, if I got got crap over that. I mean, so be it. It was what it was. I took it and I, I dusted myself off and kept moving. Yeah, I, I, I think you put up a tweet when this whole like intergender thing was going on over the summer when people were getting pissed, and I don't remember the exact comment, but I remember you saying something along the lines of like, "Oh, you know, remember when people threw me under the bus?" And I'm paraphrasing, but like, you know, you pointed yeah. out like how much the perspective has changed where you were, I think you said you, the word you used was people vilified you for it. Oh, they did. And where, 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 where we're, we're at all now these, is completely all these, different. Yeah. Where all, were all these people five years ago? You know what I mean? It's just, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a petty comment to make, but it's, it's true. It really is. And where was everybody to come to my defense, especially the people in the business, Especially mm -hmm. the people in the business, because tons of people just put their head down and keep moving because they don't want nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? And now it's like, how dare Jim Cornette say that about Kylie Ray? It's like they have the, uh, they have uh, now they now they have now they have enemies to point to. They have they have villains to to, to villainize, and they have to, to, to you know so it has a face. The, the bad guy has a face. Yeah. So now they could they could take their frustration out and it's cool. You yeah. know, it's just, it's really corny the way uh, the whole social media thing has played out, but that's just a part of pro wrestling, you know, fandom. And, uh, unfortunately a lot of the real diehard passionate pro wrestling fans kind of like take to that stuff and things get a little out of control, but that's, that's the way it is. I think the comment comes from the right, perspective though i mean you experienced it it's not like you're sitting on the sideline saying you know like oh you know choosing a side like you did go through it yourself and i appreciate you sharing you know the short-term effects and i i don't think i knew that about ring of honor but i'd argue long term it actually maybe helped you in a way because for the for many fans first learning about your name it might have been damaging then but you know, people, people know your name now and maybe they're, they're watching your work and appreciating it now instead of just saying like, oh, he's, you know, like he's the Kimberly guy. So I listen, think it might have helped you. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm about the boys. I'm about the girls. There's a lot of people who over the years wouldn't give a rat's ass about these girls as other wrestlers give them an opportunity to shine treat them like an equal in the ring treat them like an equal in a story etc cetera, etc cetera. you know and i feel like you know there was a lot of a lot of talent that kind of uh you know didn't really get the time of day maybe because they weren't put in the right position to shine whether it meant them wrestling more guys to be able to show what they're capable of because you know there used to be a way bigger gap between the girls that were pretty good and then the girls that maybe weren't so good you know it, 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 it's, you, there used to be way more maybe girls that weren't as easy to work with and, and i'm not saying from a guy's perspective i'm saying the girls would say well we don't have enough people to wrestle or we don't have enough people to work with where we could do these things mm -hmm. so wrestle why oh so wrestle somebody who's maybe a little bit more athletically capable so we can we can make you look good and show people what you're capable of and all i think that did was help build more uh female stars look at somebody like chris statlander mm -hmm. you know she was she, she was just she was there and you could like tell that there was something about her that was like a that was special she just needed some of the right opponents to be able to show people what she was capable of. And when she started wrestling guys that she could work with and, and you know, cause she, and, and, and put, t show what she could do. She, she exploded, you know, it, 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 it there's, and it, it, that should be held back. And I think now, obviously people realize that stuff and, um, it's more acceptable for girls to get opportunities against anyone and not just girls or guys or whatever. And I think the girl, the female talent has 
also improved tremendously because the expectations have become higher of what you're what you're supposed to be do, what you're supposed to do. Uh, you know, you're you're not just expected to be a girl wrestler. You're not just expected to have the opening match. You know what I mean? You're not just it's you. You got to be able to go with everybody, and I think that that's that's totally off. That's totally cool. It's exactly the way it should be mm-hmm. because. Back in the 80s and the early 90s, the girls in Japan were just as good, if not better, than the guys. They were inventing the pro wrestling moves that we use to this day in every match we do. I mean, it, it's just a, it's just a matter of you know respecting respecting people wanting to be good at something. Everybody deserves a chance. I treated all the girls I've always worked with like equals. Number one. You know, and I ate shit for that whole thing with Kimberly. Whatever. So be it. You know, I remember when I made that comment, I said I took one for the art of uh, pro wrestling to progress the art of pro wrestling or whatever. You know, there's a lot of people who don't who don't like this stuff. They just can't. They just hate it. They cannot. They cannot see it. They don't even know how to take it. Watching a man and a woman fight each other and uh, in a pro wrestling environment it's it's just so unreal to them but so morally they're so morally conflicted about it it's it's bizarre to me but to some people it's not yeah so so, to some of them you're never going to change their mind either so no to some people it's just the way it is you know so why why you know focus less on trying to change their mind and focus more on entertaining the people that will be open to it and do accept it and do enjoy it. We've got a live audience, man. In front of a live audience, I'm there to elicit a response from the audience, okay? I'm there to pop the crowd. I'm there to make sure the people who paid money to come to the show are having a good time. Whether their imagination is being suspended or they're cheering, they're booing, they're you know, they're getting drunk, they're, they want to buy merch, they want to talk. I'm there to just make sure I'm producing a good time for them. Whether I'm wrestling a girl, whether I'm wrestling a guy, whether I'm cutting a promo, whether I'm uh, doing an angle or, set, you know, uh, some sort of segment, it, it doesn't matter. That's That's my job, okay? And I'm going to not, I'm not going to half-ass anything I do. That's that's just the way I am. And uh, just that one particular thing, it kind of just, by when it, people thought it, it went too far. But, hey, you know, we, I hate, you know, I hate to admit it, but we, we were laughing about it mm-hmm. two minutes after it happened. It's just, that's pro wrestling. That's always been what pro wrestling has been about. In, in, in the, the grand scheme of it, that is the core. That is like the core, the nucleus of pro wrestling, is uh, making people believe something is real that isn't real, right? Mm-hmm. Wrestling, another thing is, you know, it's all different flavors of ice cream. Uh, you know, yeah. You like one, somebody likes another one, and that just pick, pick what you like and enjoy it instead of worrying about what else is out there and if you don't like it. Yeah, you know, uh, imagine... Back in the day, people were so outraged when Vader attacked Gorilla Monsoon. When I was a little kid, I thought that was real. So okay. Okay. Imagine that, if people yeah. were so outraged that this big, giant, fat man beat up this old man on television that they just like start. They turned off the TV and were like, "I'm never watching this again." Okay, maybe that happened. Do, do we don't live in a we didn't live in a world then where like we could instantly find out everybody's opinion uh, you know in in a flash in a few clicks you know what I mean mm-hmm. but what about um, the Dudley Boys power bombing May Young through a table you know and I remember rest, older pro wrestlers like uh, Bubba Ray Dudley he like he actually I remember Tommy Dreamer told me he contacted him and was like who is this guy. He's got some nerve, and it's like, really? Is that Bubba Ray Dudley from the Dudley Boys, the guy who did nothing but put women through tables mm-hmm. for, like, you know, to, to basically become who he is right now? It's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, there was, a, there was a lot of hypocrisy, man, a lot of stuff that pissed me off and really showed me a true side of the wrestling business with that whole thing that, you know, 
there's a there's a reason why I am the way I am, and, and that 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 whole thing is one of them. And and I have to say, um, shout out to the people that didn't give a shit and still gave me a chance because they understood what I was about, you know. And I, you know, I I've, I've publicly panned him, and but I'll, I'll defend Gabe Gabe Sapolsky. Uh, you know, he was somebody who understood that my uh, what what made me me. You know what I mean? He understood that kind of like that uh, raw intensity that I had, that kind of like fly off the handle type of mentality that I kind of used to approach that era of my career where I was mostly a heel. You know, and always kind of doing stuff like that. And, you know, it, I'm telling you, it's just a matter of time until you're seeing guys and girls wrestling each other in WWE. You know, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a matter of, we were, we were, we were doing progressive things. You know, a lot of people don't like to see it when, it, when things like that are happening. A lot, some people do. It's like a snowball effect. One thing happens, then it starts to happen again and again and again in all these other different ways. And then eventually it just becomes normal. It's really all it is. Is there a match that you would point to, whether it's against a guy or a girl, that you know you really think highlights who you are as a wrestler? Like Me you know, as a pro wrestler. Like if completely. you can narrow it down to, to one match or maybe a series, maybe an opponent where you know you really – just you'd show you'd show a new fan or you'd show somebody that's seen a bunch of your matches like this is the one that really you know told the story got the right reaction and was successful in your own in your own eyes i like to um i grew up with a with a friend of mine his name is his name is lance um we met in sophomore year of high school and he was my like my immediate i'm gonna sh- he knew he loved wrestling but I was in the know more with like tape trading, Japanese wrestling video games, like all that stuff. And I needed another friend locally because the kids like I backyard wrestled with, like they were like kind of into it. But you know what I mean? But I'm like, Mm -hmm. I'm a super hardcore nerd. So I needed another person like that to be able to be like, hey, look at all this stuff. We became like really close friends. We're still best friends to this day. I show him my matches and I ask him his opinion because he was just as instrumental in me putting together this whole idea of the wrestler I was going to be before I even was this person I am now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And of all the matches I've ever showed him, um, I showed him my first match in Japan, which was against Yuji Okobayashi uh, back in February. And I mean, he, we, he was in tears. My friend was crying. I mean, so I watched that match. I hadn't watched it even since I had the match. And I watched it with him. We watched it in his backyard on my phone. And I watched it. And, I, and you know, I often don't say this. I, there's some matches I have I absolutely love that I can talk about it. But I don't, I don't put myself over this much. But this was one of those matches where I said, like, this was it. Because it was the, it was the culmination of 20 years of work my ass off to live my dream which is to wrestle in japan it was you know you don't you don't have you don't get another chance to make a first impression you know what i mean mm-hmm. and uh, i i did an absolutely good job of making a for good first impression my first match in japan and that's also accredited to my tremendously talented opponent who is a really really good person too and um that i think that match if you could watch one match of mine to introduce yourself to me and my, my work, even though I'm constantly changing, I'm constantly evolving as a wrestler. I feel like I've gotten so much better the last six months, even wrestling less just because of how much more I've studied pro wrestling. I'm constantly trying to improve in my style, constantly trying to open up um, to different wrestling styles and to like incorporate it into my own game. I feel like I've improved. I feel like even since February, I've improved tremendously as far as like conditioning and far as uh, just things I'm doing. But if you could watch a match to introduce yourself to me, I would go pick up the the GCW Japanese tour um, from February. I wrestled Yuji Okabayashi my first match, and it was a tremendous match. If um, if you know, I think you can get it on Fight TV. I'm not sure if that match is on like independent wrestling TV yet, but uh, you know, 
there's plenty of stuff from the last year. The last year, 2019, was a huge year for me. I had a lot of great singles matches with a lot of great opponents. Um, and beyond wrestling, GCW, um, it was a uh, it was it was a good year for me. But that match was. If you're asking for one, I'd say go go watch that match. Obviously, uh, I started the call talking about Bloodsport. I'm going to close things out with that. Uh, sure. You're in the you were in the main event last year, but it was a late change due to John Moxley's elbow injury, the the infection. But now you're in the main event. You're not only in the main event; it's the announced main event, and you're facing John Moxley. So, not only is he getting another shot at Bloodsport, you're getting another shot at really what could have been a, a really big weekend for you. It was originally scheduled for. Tampa this year, WrestleMania weekend, but you know, what, what kind of pride do you take in, you know, getting that shot? Like you said, you're, you're going to train with Josh Barnett, but you know, they, they picked you to, to headline last year as a, as a late change. And now to build into that match, to, to give the fans like the best possible show, what kind of, what kind of thoughts do you have going into that match? Uh, I, I give people the best possible show. That's 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 what it comes down to. I'm confident in saying it because I believe in my abilities, and that's just what I've been doing and what I've been producing the last year that I've been wrestling, uh, you know, as consistently as I have. Um, I'm not a huge social media guy. Uh, I don't have flashy gear. Um, I certainly know how to talk a lot of shit, and I can. But I'm generally pretty humble about what I do. But in this case, you want me to tell you why I'm in this position? It's because I'm really good at pro wrestling. Um, why was everything leading up to WrestleMania the way it was? It's because I'm really good at pro wrestling. You know, <sighs> unfortunately, we live in a time where, I mean, the, the TV machine of pro wrestling gobbled up almost everybody. So what you're seeing is in the last like year, especially is a trend of guys being hoisted into the spotlight that maybe are not re prepared yet. Or, you know, there's, there's just a lot of uh, pieces missing from the puzzle of what they're supposed to be, where they're supposed to be at, at this time when they're receiving this much attention. Uh, so it's up to somebody like me who has the experience, who's been on the road, who's been clocking the miles for years to help bring all these guys up to speed. When I work with guys like this, I have to be extra, you know, attentive to every detail. And it's only going to make me better. It's only going to help you improve when you, when you're working like that, in that type of, env of an environment. And, um, as well as constantly, I mean, grinding it out, watching pro wrestling. I mean, sometimes four or five, six hours a day. I mean, I live for it. I just train, I eat, I sleep, I watch pro wrestling. I train, I eat, I sleep, I watch pro wrestling. You know, I had a couple of years of my life where I was, you know, I was in a relationship. I was going, I was going to college. I was, uh, I was very, very close to becoming a fireman in, the, in Massachusetts city where i lived and uh i just i changed my whole life and i went back to pursuing my dreams uh without any distractions made me a better pro wrestler it got me to where i'm at right now it's the reason why i'm having this match it's the reason why i have the opportunities it's because my focus 100 percent is being the best pro wrestler in every you know respect and, and trying to cover all grounds and do it, and, and and you know, a lot of people always ask me why haven't you been signed yet, or why aren't you on TV? And I I can't give you an exact answer as to why, but I could tell you that I love what I do and I love who I am. I make no bones about it, and I'm proud of of what I have accomplished, and I do it my way. And if that's the reason why things haven't panned out the way they have uh, yet, then I'll take it. You know, I'm I'm all about doing things my own way and having it happen then uh you know doing it somebody else's way or being an ass kisser or playing games 
and you know trying to just expedite the process so I could just sign a piece of paper and, and get a you know get a, get a hundred thousand dollars for two years, make two hundred grand, just go be a player somewhere. Um, I'm not in pro wrestling for the money. I never was. I'm in pro wrestling because I love pro wrestling. That's really what it comes down to. Um, it, 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 it matches like this with John Moxley. Yeah, they're huge. Uh, there's implications involved. There was tons of implications involved with my matches over the course of WrestleMania weekend that had links to my goals and my dreams that I'm trying to accomplish. You know, I'm trying, like I said earlier, I'm trying to work for New Japan Pro Wrestling. You know, in my opinion, they're they're the best pro wrestling company in the world. They uh, they represent the sport and the, and the art and the entertainment aspect of pro wrestling. I think better than anybody right now uh, on that high on that really high level. You know, um, I feel like they do a really good job of being a pro wrestling company, which isn't really much to ask for. But unfortunately, here in in this country with the the television products that we have presented to us, maybe it doesn't seem seem as much, you know what I mean? So I, I know where I want to go and I know where I want to be. So anytime I, you know, have an opportunity like this, much I'm actually, he's a, he's an IWGP champion, you know, to prove myself against somebody like that, to show people, you know, watching behind the scenes that I am capable of taking that role, taking the ball and running with it, and being that guy, you know, this is the stuff I live for. Cause these are the things I want. And I tell people all the time, um, you know, especially going back to, like, say, WrestleMania week. Tell me two years ago I was going to be in that position. I would have been like, no way, you know. But I just, I dug my feet in. I willed things into existence. I worked really, really hard. And here I am. And, and that's why I, you know, I'm in this position. I have, a, I work for a great company, Game Changer Wrestling. They are you know, by far and away, the best independent wrestling promotion to come along in a very, very, very long time. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to showcase my my abilities without any restrictions there. And that's a big part of why the last year I became a, more of a household name, I guess, um, was because of Game Changer Wrestling letting me just be me. You know, so my hat's off to the company. My hat's off to Josh Barnett for getting involved in this whole blood sport project because originally he wasn't and um, giving it that real, that real legitimacy, you know, and, um, and all the fans that have been supportive through this whole thing. And maybe the ones who kind of stopped being supportive. Thank you too, but fuck you at the same time. <laughs> um, I'm still going to, going to show you exactly why I'm in the position I'm in and why I was in the position I was in in March and April and why I'm, I honestly feel like, you know, I'm the, I'm the best pro wrestler. That's it. I believe in my abilities. I believe in what I'm capable of. And, you know, I, I hope I just, uh, unfortunately I, I did uh, circumstances have nothing to do with me or anybody involved in wrestling. I didn't have the chance to show you that in April. Hopefully I get to give you a nice taste now on October 11th.